Hi, this time we are visiting the southern part of Kamei Botany Bay National Park at Kanel. The national park has two areas, La Perouse in the north and Kanel in the south. Kanel area is of particular heritage significance. The entrance of Kamei Botany Bay National Park at Kanel. Welcome to Kame Botany Bay National Park. The 40 minutes walk starts from the visitor center. Meeting place tells the story of the meeting of Aboriginal and European cultures. There are interpretive signs and soundscape along the path. An extract from the journal of Joseph Banks, April 1770. The path leads to Captain Cook's landing place on the foreshore. This place is on our National Heritage List. Captain Cook's crew spent eight days to gather food and scientific data. Year 2020 is the 250th anniversary of Captain Cook's landing, and some commemorating sculptures have been added. Cook Obelisk was erected in 1870 at the 100th anniversary. At 200th anniversary, The Eyes of the Land and the Sea is one of the 250th anniversary sculptures. This tidal element reveals the ribs of the ship Endeavour, or the rib cage of a whale. The regal people then looked out the big canoe. The ribs emphasizes the ghostly presence of Cook and his men. Aboriginal symbol and Cook's diary extracts are etched onto each rib. A viewing platform displays heritage interpretive information. The view of the landing area from the platform. There are bronze sculptures of the canoe of the Regal people on the foreshore. The fish and the canoe echo the generations of Regal people hunted gathered, sang, danced and ate. Banks Memorial Cook's crew took water from the fresh water stream here. The area has been landscaped with urban scape. Forby Sutherland, Coast crew member, was the first British buried in Australia. Memorial for the naturalist, Dr. Salander, Cook named Botany Bay for the botanist interest. Cook's landing in 1770 was the first Aboriginal encounter of the British. There was no reconnection until 18 years later when the first fleet arrived. The Wales is another one of the 250th anniversary bronze sculptures. Here is a good place to watch whales migrating north in winter and south in summer.
The walk starts from the end of Cape Solander's Drive. The boardwalk keeps visitors away from the cliff edge. We took 90 minutes to reach the lighthouse. The sandstone cliffs are breathtaking. Tabagai Cliff, during 1920 to 1969, some fishermen built their dwellings under the cliff edge. Tabagai Gap The boardwalk follows the coastal cliff. A lot of wildflowers at this spring time. This is Blue Hole Gap. We are approaching Cape Bailey Lighthouse. Cape Bailey Lighthouse Panorama The cliff wheel on the return walk We are returning to the Cape Solander's car park Muru Trail starts opposite to the visitor center. There are many native plants. This is Dagger Bush. It's well adapted to survive bushfires. Note the cylindrical sharp pointed leaves. The trail crosses Cape Solander's Drive. The trail leads to Yenna picnic area. Across the bay entrance is La Perouse, an eastern suburb of Sydney. The left side of the picnic area. This is the right side of the picnic area. We then return via the Yenna Trail. The trail meanders through the bush. Banks Solander's Trek is a short trek with informative panels showcasing native plants. Grass tree. Here's a termite nest on a tree. This is scribbly gum. The scribbles are created by tunneling of the morph larvae. Here's some jibang fruit. This is a cabbage palm tree. The track ends at the visitor center. Thank you for viewing. Hope that you enjoy this national park as much as we do. See you next time.